For most of us, there are maybe three things we would get out of our cars for during the thick of a Norwegian winter. A substantial pile of money, a well-heated restaurant, or to rescue a tiny infant or creature who may be in peril. And that's exactly why a Norwegian man pulled over once he spotted a furry little critter he thought had no business in the middle of the road. When he tried returning the animal to its rightful owner, however, a shocking revelation proved he probably should have just stayed in his car. As he did every morning, Jostein Hansen was dropping his kids off at school when he noticed a tiny animal scurrying across a snow-covered road. Curious, the dad pulled over. The dad, of course, knew that small animals and well-traveled highways didn't mix all too well, so, with impressive dexterity and speed, he danced through traffic and snagged it before the worst happened. Jostein identified the animal as a hamster. Back at home, his own daughter had one, so he had a fondness for the little rodents. If some kids have lost it, then it will be seen as a disaster he said. So I took the chance to try to catch it. With the hamster in his hands, and thinking still of how sad his own daughter would be were her hamster to go missing, the dad resolved to find the owner. In the meanwhile, he stashed the hamster in his glove box. As a man with limited resources, Jostain knew he needed a little extra help to see the hamster to her proper home. So he reached out to a Norwegian newspaper, Itromso. Assignment editors passed the story on to Santa Drogset Borsted, who couldn't help but frown when she learned she'd be spending her next few hours looking for a hamster's owner. After all, Pulitzer surprises, she knew, didn't usually go to those investigating lost Norwegian rodents. Nevertheless, she met up with Jostain Hansen and his rescued hamster. She had no idea what this story would become. Hamster in tow, the two traveled to a pet store affiliated with Animal Protection Norway, an organization dedicated to animal dignity and welfare. If anyone could find the original home of this lost hamster, it was one of the 9,000 people working for the organization. And indeed, the pet store employee did help Jostain and Santa in a way. The pet store employee looked over the hamster. Turning the critter over in her hands, she processed the brown, black, and blonde fur. And then she told the duo it wasn't actually a hamster. What Jostain had chased down in the middle of a snowy Norwegian road wasn't actually a pet, either. In a way, actually, Jostain had conducted a kidnapping. A rodent napping, if you will. The creature was actually a Norway lemming. Indigenous, of course, to Norway, these furry critters do bear a striking resemblance to those pets we've come to love. But wait, you might be thinking. The creature was playing Frogger in the middle of the road. That's so very lemming, right? The creatures, after all, have a reputation for chasing each other off cliffs. So Jostain kind of did it a favor, saving it from its nature. Nope. Contrary to their behavior in the popular video game series Lemmings, the critters are smart, master burrowers, and they like to go on the move when their homes get overcrowded. They do just fine in nature, no matter the weather. So, back in the pet store, Jostain knew he needed to return the critter to the wild. He and Santa went back to the road from which the lemming was originally rescued to let her run free in the snow not in a wheel. Then, in the middle of a dark and dreary day, the duo released the lemming, waving at her as she made her way back home. Those involved couldn't help but laugh. They'd been a part of the world's most bizarre mistaken identity case. Santa may not have won a Pulitzer with the story, but she was smiling by the end of the day. She covered a story that she didn't think she, or anyone involved, would ever forget. As for Jostain. While some thought to pile on the eager dad in the aftermath, the guy did pick up a wild animal and put it in his glove box, the pet store worker sided with the overambitious rescuer. He did the right thing, the worker said. He saw an animal he thought needed help. And, to be fair, that lemming did look a lot like a hamster. In fact, Jostain's decision to help an animal he thought was in trouble is far better than the alternative, letting an animal suffer because you think it's a okay. Jim Passmore of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, learned the same lesson. His usual stomping ground was Hakey Creek, a park frequented by outdoor lovers admiring the plentiful pecan trees. There, while waiting for his Yorkies to do their business, Jim spotted something out of the ordinary. A strange mass floated on the surface of the park's waters, sitting in stark contrast to the normally smooth surface of the creek. It was big, brown, and vaguely animal-like. Squinting to get a better look, he guessed the object was a log but he wasn't sure. Edging closer to the shore, Jim stepped off the trail onto the muddy grass. If he could just get a closer look, he might be able to satisfy his curiosity. Finally, with a jolt, Jim realized the thing wasn't a thing after all. It was covered in brown hair. It was alive. 
Feeling lucky to glimpse a wild creature in its natural habitat, Jim was only more intrigued. The unknown animal was moving, barely. Could it be gently stirring in its sleep? Floating, but rattled by a dream? Then his dogs began to snarl. The nearer Jim inched to the animal, the more riled up his tiny pups got. Their predatory snarls and growls made it seem like they sensed some looming danger. Nevertheless, he grew concerned by the animal's feeble movements. It looked desperate and stuck. Since the thing was hanging out in a wooded, muddy, creek bank, all signs suggested it was a beaver. Then, fresh off the revelation, he noticed something hidden in the brush that hinted towards a more sinister situation. A carrier. The case was large, the kind used to transport pets to the vet, and appeared abandoned. Poking around inside, Jim discovered a large filthy blanket. What worried him more was that, beneath the blanket, was a heavy-weighted chain. Standing there, Jim tried to piece together what was going on. Obviously, someone had discarded the carriage. Judging by the haphazard scene, the dirty blanket, the chain, the bitten and mangled cage, a cruel individual had dumped a helpless creature in the wild. Someone, Jim thought, intended to harm the animal, but it escaped. While understanding washed over him, a rustling in the woods got his attention. Another beaver crawled out of the undergrowth. Jim took this as a sign. Not fleeing from human contact, the beaver moved into the open. Jim watched mystified as it crossed the ground and moved closer down the creek's edge towards the mystery creature. Seeing as he had pegged the mystery animal as a beaver, Jim took this new beaver's fantastical intervention as a positive omen to trust his gut. He approached this beaver, creeping the final few feet towards the floating animal. The other animal stirred weakly, trapped in the muddy suction of the water. Side by side, Jim knew he'd guessed wrong. The creature was way too big to be a beaver unless it was a radioactive giant one. All along, the creature in distress had been a big, fluffy, dog. Muck and grime concealed a gorgeous collie. Glad he further investigated the mystery creature, Jim stepped into the creek, now determined to save him. Better safe than sorry, Jim called out to some other pedestrians to give him a hand freeing the dog. They gathered around him, but as Jim had feared, any contact sent the dog into frenzy mode. It bit someone who got too close. With the creature still stuck in the mud, Jim re-evaluated their strategy. They needed to be careful. Grabbing onto the scared pooch would only freak it out further. So, in order to unstick the cranky thing, they needed a distraction. A solution popped into Jim's noggin. The dog couldn't bite what it couldn't see. Grabbing a dark sweatshirt, he draped it on the suffering dog's head. Cutting out all vision and light worked like a charm, the hairy critter appeared soon. Now that the dog was subdued, they had to yank it free. It slipped further into the mud, and so would the rescuers if they kept standing in the gloop. They needed a pulley system. Wrangling up a makeshift lift compassed of dog leashes, they looped the ropes around its belly. Planting their feet, the gang heaved. You'd figure several able-bodied men would pluck the helpless creature out in seconds, but it was as if this guy had been super glued. Finally, after one high-stakes game of tug-of-war, the dog slipped free. Elated, Jim pulled back the covering and wiped away the mud to reveal the dog's face. The dog looked thankful but understandably terrified. There was no telling how long the poor creature wrestled to free itself from the mutt after its owner deliberately cast their pet away. All they could confirm was that the handsome doggy appeared perfectly healthy. Jim, a long-established dog lover, was furious. How anyone could abuse an animal, let alone their pet, he never would fathom. He phoned the police, and officers arrived swiftly on the scene. Finally, the scared pet had advocates, and they set to work to keep him safe. Upon further examination, the police began to piece together the sad truth of the dog's tail. Locked in the animal carrier, trying to bite its way out, the sweet creature had been dropped on the street. At some point, the cage had been struck by a car, sending it tumbling into the forest, where it landed in the muddy bank of the creek. By a pure miracle, the dog survived this horror story, mostly unscathed, but surely mentally wounded. If Jim hadn't been guided by the auspicious beaver, who knows if the poor thing would have made it out of the mud. But that magical appearance raised more questions than answers. Was the beaver signaling a fellow animal in danger, or was it pure coincidence? However, no one had time to ponder over the mystery. Officers realized the dog wasn't walking out of the paddock. They had to get the sizable dog, they dubbed Teddy, due to his stuffed animal likeness, to the vet for an examination. Teddy was wiped out from his mud struggle. He appeared to be pretty overweight, and that, coupled with possible injuries, prevented leading him on a leash. In another twist of fortune, the rescuers found a wheelbarrow not too far away. Wrapped in a blanket, Teddy was carefully placed in the wheelbarrow and pushed out of the paddock. 
The next call Jim made was to the Oklahoma Alliance for Animals. In a few minutes, they made arrangements to take Teddy under their wings. In a way, Teddy dodged another attempt on his life. Landing a spot with the OAA allowed him a chance at rehabilitation. His scared demeanor and his justified lack of trust of humans would have certainly marked him for euthanasia if he'd been taken to the shelter. Not to mention, Teddy bit one of his rescuers, which, regrettably, is a fast track for putting an animal to sleep. The rescue group refused to give up hope for his future. Fearing that his lashing out was a side effect of rabies, they ran tests to rule it out. Results came back clear, Teddy was rabies free. But he still had a long journey to make him well enough to find a new family. His movements and general attitude were low energy and he needed to increase activity to lose some pounds. Once the kind rescue workers started spoiling Teddy, his sourness melted away. In its place was a soft, gentle, somewhat slimmer, long-coated sweetheart. His story gained viral traction and he had a wide fanbase cheering on his fitness journey. Teddy didn't have to wait long for his happily ever after. Jesse, a vet tech for the rescue, fell hard for his sad puppy dog eyes. The forces of nature made sure Teddy was found and granted the fairy tale life he deserved. 